Today's video is another one from one of our viewers. In their comments, they asked about clustering and triangulation and whether they should start with one or the other, how they are different, how they are the same. So let's go over that. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and we're going to be talking a little bit about clustering and triangulation. Clustering and triangulation are two really important tools in helping to identify how your matches are related to you and how they are related to each other. Well, a cluster is a group of matches who also match each other. Not necessarily the exact same segments of DNA, but they just share DNA. And this is a good indication of a overall family group, a group of people that are all related to some ancestor. Although it's not definitive because of the way clustering works, you can actually have some people who aren't related to everybody, but you could also have some people in this cluster who don't necessarily share DNA with everybody in the cluster. So I'm going to create this diagram here where we have a big circle and this is a cluster of matches. This is what this represents. Now this cluster is related probably to some distant ancestor. So for instance, hey, this cluster is related to my ancestor, William Kevern. That's a good start. And now we can go and we can look at how we identify these people. And that really is by shared matches. Different tools on different sites call it something different. For instance, on GEDmatch, it's the match both or one of two kits. Some call it the shared matches. Some call it the matches in common. Basically, as you are taking two people, you and somebody else, let's say a second cousin or a third cousin, that you know how you're related, so we have this third cousin that we're related through this second great grandparent, then all of those matches that you share in common are also related to that set of grandparents or that great great grandparent. Shared matches are what is used for making a cluster. And you can do this by yourself or there's tools that can do it automatically. If you've heard of auto clustering, what it's doing is it's just comparing shared matches between lots of people to be able to create these clusters. Now triangulation is different than clustering. It sounds sort of the same and sometimes it might even look sort of the same and they are related which is why they can be confused at times. Triangulation is three or more matches who share the same segment of DNA and that is the key difference between them. With clustering you're sharing DNA between it. You match each other. With triangulation, you share the same segment of DNA. So all three of these people have the same segment of DNA. So let's go back and look at our diagram here. We have this great big cluster. Within that cluster, there happens to be a group that is a triangulation group. Now that triangulation group, they share some specific segment of DNA. So in here, I have chromosome 15 from 32 megabases to 58 megabases. That is the segment that those people represented by the purple actually share. Now they may share some other DNA with some of the other members of this cluster, but all the people in this triangulation group have this specific segment. And that segment has been traced down from William Kevern. In other words, there's a lot of descendants of William Kevern, but only some small subset of those descendants share this segment of DNA from him. And so in this cluster, we could actually have lots of different triangulation groups representing DNA from William Kevern that others share, but not everybody shares. So with triangulation groups, we find them by finding shared segments. So there's tools on GEDmatch called Segment Search or the Triangulation Tool. You have MyHeritage, you have their automatic triangulation that they do. And you can also use a chromosome browser and looking at matches one-to-one -to, -one to be able to find segments that these groups all share in common. So triangulation and clustering, they're related, but they're not the same. Triangulation you can think of as a subset of clustering. So when our viewer asks the question, what should I start with? Should I start with clustering or should I start with triangulation? Well, I would actually say start with clustering first because clustering gives you the great big group of people. 
that are related in some way to an ancestor. Once you have that, then you can actually look for triangulation groups within that cluster. And that triangulation group is going to pinpoint a specific segment that came from that ancestor. And everybody else who happens to share in that triangulation group is also related to that ancestor. Now, if you like this video, then be sure to click the thumbs up and join um, FHF Extra if you'd like to help support our channel. It's only $2.99 a month and we provide more videos and webinars that are exclusively for our members.